All right, welcome to our brief review of uh, D2L or our online tool that Hack provides us to access the course. Much of this course is being delivered through D2L. I am doing live Zoom sessions for everybody involved, uh, both lecture as today, as well as labs for the people who have signed up for the Zoom labs. Um, and a lot of the material is going to be delivered on D2L. Some of it's going to be recorded, and then the links will be put on to D2L. Um, all of the quizzes and the final will be on D2L. All of your homework can be recorded or I'm sorry, um, scanned and then uploaded to D2L. So D2L is a primary method of scoring, grading, recording, and managing all the data associated with this course. Anytime I have extra bonus material, some interesting websites, some additional material I think is good to read, I will put that out onto D2L for you. And this is gonna be very dynamic during the course. The D2L site itself, um, it's going to have some errors at the beginning here. Every time I begin a course, there's so many little pieces and parts to D2L that I find I've made a mistake here and there. And uh, don't get freaked out if you see something different than expected. Just send me a text or an email and let me fix it and we'll be good to go. So this particular course is a combined course in D2L for both CRNs. The online only and then the online remote lecture plus hands-on lab courses. So both of these CRNs, both of these sections are available in the same D2L site. You can tell it's motors and controls because I stuck a picture of a motor in there, right? If you click into it, um, in D2L, you're gonna see that you've got your main sections. Most of the material is going to be visible to you through the content section. In your course home, you will see your news, your content, um, any updates will be mentioned here on the right. And then on the, the far right, underneath the updates, you'll see calendar, upcoming events, and due dates. And Today, on Tuesday, January 17th, there's nothing due today. However, there's a bunch of stuff due by 11.59 p.m. January 22nd, which is Sunday. Um, and you're going to see that all of the first four chapter quizzes are due then. Um, we have Lab 0 due, and I'll talk about that lab in a second. And we have Lab 1 due those dates. And we've got an assignment. For week one, we're going to dive into that as well. That's a place where you'll be able to upload some of your workbook information. It's going to be a Dropbox. And uh, then starting next week, it shows you some of the due dates starting next week. And as promised, chapters 11 and 12 will be due next week, January 29th. So we're not going to get into that. So generally speaking, you're going to see all that information. Uh, for what you want in the course under content. So let's first look at content. In content, I have everything broken out by week, except for the introduction and the syllabus. And uh, the first thing I want to do is briefly go through the syllabus. Some of you have already read the syllabus. Now, if you use a little down arrow next to the syllabus, you can download the syllabus to your PC. And the syllabus is where I maintain all of the schedule information. So let's, let's uh, reshare the syllabus. And this is what the syllabus looks like. And let's blow this up, whoops. Let's try sharing that again. Apparently, I didn't like it when I changed the size. Let's blow this up a little bit bigger so you can read it more easily. So in the syllabus, uh, it's got some heading information about the course basics. And I do make mistakes. Chad caught one. I probably have other mistakes in here. 
Um, we are working on a pretty complicated schedule. So uh, hopefully this lays out the correct times and locations for all of the, the classes correctly here. In this case, um, IA201. Um, it gives you the credit hours and the sections and kind of some basic information. Um, I want to mention a couple things in the syllabus. Please, any formal communications has to be through your Hawk mail. Now, I have given out my cell phone, and I don't mind if you send me a quick message via a text message. In fact, if you're going to be late or going to have to skip class or something like that, that's absolutely the best way to do it. Let me know what's going on with you. Um, but any formal communications, anything complex, any long questions, please make sure you send it in email. Anytime you send any email, please include in the subject, the course, as well as an actual subject like IA201, having trouble with homework or something like that. So I know what the email is really about. Um, make sure you <laughs> include your name. I can't tell you how many times I've received an email from somebody without their name in it. Um, I can't always discern their name by the email address. I have to go back and read through a long list to figure that stuff out. So please include your name and make the emails as well as you should any emails to any work environment. Um, and we assume this is kind of a work environment. We want to maintain professional standards here um, where you have a greeting like, uh, dear sir, or thank you, professor, or uh, professor, or hey, Rob, even hey, Rob is better than nothing, a body, and then finish with your name, and uh, make sure you're very clear on what you want from me in the email. Um, the syllabus, uh, I'll mention this. If we have a inclement weather delay, we will cancel that lab session if we have an in-class lab, it's pretty much just Wednesdays. If we have inclement weather, we're gonna to have to cancel that lab session and we'll reschedule the entire lab. We're not gonna deal with a delayed opening problem. If, if, it's, if we have a delayed opening or inclement weather, we'll cancel it, we'll have to reschedule. I Even though it's a seven week course, I am trying to set it up so we have at least one extra lab session for makeup labs. Um, the syllabus has course description, our textbook and workbook are in here. Um, the outcomes are standard for the course. I'm not going to read through them. You can read through that. And then here is the schedule of in events. So you can see that um, we've got various days set up. Um, and our content for this week is chapters one through four. We're going to do a little bit on lab safety. We're going to talk about wiring standards and colors, and we're going to dive into lab number one, which is wiring up a manual motor starter. Now, those of you who are in the remote world, you're also going to be doing lab zero. Lab zero is just for the remote lab. And I'm going to show you where to find these labs in a little bit, but let's finish up with the syllabus first. So we can see all of our plans laid out like this. They are not fixed in stone. COVID or any kind of inclement weather will potentially cause a hassle. So we may need to move things around. Um, I also mentioned this other thing in the syllabus. This class is using a technique called a flipped classroom. It's not absolutely required, but it works way better if you've read through the material first watched any videos I put out there first. And then when we get together in our remote sessions, you've got really pertinent questions. It really works a whole lot better that way. If you wait until after uh, I've started the lecture to start going through the material, then your understanding of that material will be less. And it, it could still work. Some of you guys might be sharp enough to just figure that stuff out and go with it. Um, and that's great. But if you do feel like you're not quite understanding the material, you need a little extra assistance, you please, please need to start reading ahead of time. And then when we dive into the lectures, you can ask the questions and I can answer them. And you probably won't be the only one who wanted that question asked and answered. I can't always predict every question that needs to be answered. 
I like to have the philosophy of working towards mastery. However, I am limited by the time frame of this seven week course. So I'm going to let you keep plugging away at most things um, if you want. However, I am limited by the time frame of the seven weeks, and I am going to cut off access to certain things like the homework. If you haven't made an attempt at the homework, then you're going to rapidly fall behind. So the only way I can really be sure you're going to keep up is by cutting off access. The rest of this, I'm going to let you read through at your own rate. If you feel like you need some help, um, I'm not going to go through the academic dishonesty, but I will talk about the end here. Need of accommodations. It's very common for me to get students who, for one reason or another, just need a little more time. They need a little more information provided them in a different format, and I am willing to bend over backwards, if at all possible, provide people what they need. So. If you do need something like that, contact the accommodation folk uh, at the campuses and they will send me a letter and we'll figure it out. Um, and the, there's the lady right there, Aaron Rose at the Gettysburg campus. So let's continue on with D2L. <clears throat> 